This is a vBulletin installation video tutorial. Installing vBulletin. Well, it's pretty simple to do. We're going to require a few things from you. So what I want you to do is go ahead and get prepared and you're going to need the following. Number one, hosting manager access. Common examples include WHM cPanel parallels. See a cPanel logo example right there. Number two, file manager or FTP client access. Common examples include FileZilla, any form of FTP client, or even cPanel's file manager. You can see an example of those right there. Number three, we're going to need your suit or form classic zip file downloaded from the members area. And finally, number four, your vBulletin customer number, this is required for the installation script. Now, let's get started. It's quick and easy. Now what I'm going to do is show you an example of how to install in cPanel. And what I've done is switch the screen out and this is pretty much the areas you'll be looking for in cPanel when you're going through doing your installation. Now, what you want to do is have all the files and everything ready that we just went through the uh, 1 through 4 and have all that information ready. Now what you can do is go ahead and click My SQL Database Wizard and after you do that it's going to bring up a screen very similar to this. Now if you already have a prefix here then what you'll want to do is note that and so your database name will actually be the prefix underscore then the name you give it. Let's actually call this videos. Then we're going to say next step. Okay. Now what we want to do is create a user to associate with the database. So password. Always make your passwords very secure. If you have a very easy password, something simple, your dog's name, your cat's name, if the username is admin and then the password is one two three four five six that's just leaving you open uh, and leaving you vulnerable so be sure it's a very secure password strong or higher and we're going to create the user okay now what you have to do is give this user all privileges so the user can handle anything that vBulletin is telling it to do in regards to the database. So we want to click on all privileges and then hit next step. And now you're done. You've added the user to the database. And now what we'll want to do, I'm not going to worry about that, is make a note of this. So we have Superman videos is the database name. Username is Superman test guy. And then our password was B4X9VN percentage. Okay, so let's review that information one more time before we begin. Our database name is Superman underscore videos. Database user, Superman underscore test guy. Database user password, I just made one up real quick, uh, B4X9VN percentage. Now we're going to go ahead and proceed from there. And what I've done is already bring up FileZilla. And I've already created a install video directory. So we're going to pretend that public HTML, which is pretty much your root, that this is our root. So just disregard that and pretend this is blank. So what we want to do is go into the folder on our computer where we have the zip file downloaded. And you'll see I have the suit here. And you want to extract it. And now you can do extract all if you don't have 7-zip or WinRoar or something other to uh, extract files with. You want to give it just a second. And now what we need to do before we go in and install is prepare a file. So we want to go into the upload folder and we want to go into includes. And then we want to look for config.php new you rename that and take off the dot new at the end yes and then what we want to do is open that in some form of text editor and let's go ahead and edit the file now after you've opened the file in an editor what you want to do is scroll down a little bit 
Now remember, our database name was Superman underscore videos. So you want to copy that and paste that in. Your technical email, this is for any database errors or anything like that. You'll just want to give your email. Your email at example.com, hotmail.com, live.com, um, your site.com, whatever you have your mail set up as. Now we want to go down further. On most hosts, this is going to remain local host. Uh, some hosts have unusual setups. <clears throat> One off the top of my head would be GoDaddy. It would not be local host here. You would want to look for uh, the other information that you key in here besides local host. Now the username, we remember that we created one and it was underscore test guy and then the password let's bring this back up because we took note of it so we would have it and I do have the test guy right I'm gonna copy this password and then paste that in now the rest of this if you're installing this for the first time never done it before leave everything blank you shouldn't need to modify anything else if you come up and there's problems or errors after you've done your initial installation maybe you'll want to come back and take a look at something in here but for now leave that as is you want to do your file save and you've saved it okay now what we need to do is upload that and all the files in the upload folder to that folder in the FTP that we see right here so let's do that real quick so we want to go back and look in the folder on our computer go up a level and actually stay in upload highlight everything in this folder uh, if you can view your hidden files like thumbs db you don't need that one so deselect it now if you're using filezilla you can just simply drag over to filezilla and drop the files in there okay now FileZilla does the modes automatically okay otherwise what you're gonna wanna do is take a look at the manual now there is a brand new updated manual for review bulletin 4 as well but the files always go in two different modes okay see it says right here most FTP client applications will handle the file transfers automatically but if for some reason your application does not you should make a note of the following all text files to be transferred in ASCII mode Okay, so that's all the files containing plain text from the vBulletin package. Um, pretty much PHP files, JavaScript files, XML, CSS, uh, even HTML. All the non-text files such as images, anything like that, 